And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we've got our new dining hall up and running. I just chucked it in there a few minutes ago. This is our new great hall. It can support about 18 duplicates. It's got a bunch of nice plants in there. Everyone's going to be very happy, hopefully. Now, there is one thing we need to put in. Because of the way we have set up our food, any food that gets dropped on the ground will just get left there. That would be problematic. So let's just go under utilities and stick ourselves in a sweepy dock made of gold right there. Now, the sweepy here is going to walk along this section and suck up any bits that get dropped on the ground, namely food. Then what we can do is we can grab that food and, oh, we can chuck it down into our coal storage. Uh, give me an auto sweeper right there. Uh, give that one second. Well, there goes sweepy. They should be able to get all the way to the end here and sweep up any food that drops. Then they'll bring it all back to the sweepy dock. Then, once they've brought it back to the sweepy dock, it'll get auto-swept up by this auto-sweeper into this conveyor loader and dumped back down into this section. We'll just copy and paste the settings from this conveyor loader here, which should be all... In fact, no, we'll make it all the edibles foods will get swept up in there and chucked down. One nice bonus to this is any food that comes out of the gate might get swept up. I might have to move that one tile to the right, but that should work. And what we can do is we can extend this up further so we can make more here if we need to actually expand our population. That will require us to move the bedrooms, but... We'll worry about that at a later date. For now, we've got this sorted. Now, there's a couple of things that need doing. One, I want to get a big geothermal power plant down here. Well, not that big. Say, two, about eight steam turbines down here. If we clamp eight steam turbines down here, we should be able to generate a decent amount of power. Say, tapping into somewhere in there or there. I want to go where there's a little bit of rock so we can get a little bit deeper and maybe pull out more heat. And then we'll probably put our oil boiler over here, but that will be for another day. Now, I have been advised repeatedly in the comments that there is actually a natural gas geyser on this map. Uh, other people have access. I, I left the map seat up and all that so people could play around with it. Spoilers, guys. Spoilers. So they're telling me I should go uh, hammer into the swamp biome. So I don't know which swamp biome it's in. But if I had to guess, it's probably this one, judging by, well, we've seen most of this one and there's not much of it left. And there's already a vent in there. So it's probably in here. Also, there's coal. We'd like a little bit more coal. We're actually starting to run low on coal. I've never gone with this few hatches before. And uh, we're eating through the coal pretty fast. So I'm thinking what we do here is, well, before we go and grab the, that, that vent, I would like to start doing some prep work here. We need to get all the oil out of this section and maybe make ourselves a big oil tank over here. Once we get all the oil out of this section, we're going to have to vacuum this area out. We're going to be working with magma. So, yeah, I like working with magma in a vacuum because otherwise it gets really uncomfortable if you mess up. So give me one minute here while we dig ourselves out a water tank or a liquid tank and start moving all the oil this direction. Oh, 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 uh, one of our duplicates just dropped some barbecue on the ground. I was just coming back here to check on a gate activation. We got some iron. Uh, okay, sweet beat. Oh, you. Thank you, Rady, for just messing that all up. Oh, timing, timing, timing. Poor sweet beat, they're starving. Well, that went surprisingly well. I was kind of thinking getting all of the oil out of here was going to be really hard, but it turns out it wasn't actually that bad. Um, you know, all I had to do was brick in a few places here, dig a big hole, all the oil flowed out. We've even cored out this area. This oil is going to take a while to drain. And while that's going on, we're going to core ourselves out an area to grow our next crop section while also expanding into this slime area up here to see if we can't find that, uh, that thing we're looking for, that gas vent. And let's see, we'll just dig right across here. The great thing about digging through here, and also the worst thing is, there's going to be this chlorine we have to deal with, but that's not the end of the world. But we'll also dig up all this oxalite, which should help a little bit. I keep oxygen at oxygenating this place, and we're going to turn this place into a farm. Uh, you, let's put a sandstone tile right about there. We're going to fill this area in here with water weed. Uh, we should have the space for it. We just need to chuck in some salt water. All right, let's see what we've got over here. Oh, and this also digs us up a bunch of coal because we're down to 21 tons of coal. Maybe going through that a lot faster than I'm comfortable with right now. We may have to cut energy consumption. Right, uh, no natural gas vent. I must have had it wrong. Maybe it's down below. Oh, and one very bizarre thing about this map generation. There's no slime lung germs in this slime up here. This slime is completely devoid of it. I presume the anti engine fire is some kind of cold or something. Yeah, it's the cold probably got in and killed it off. Down below, plenty of slime lung, so we can kind of chop this stuff out of the top if we want. Also, I'm thinking, yeah, a, a gas pump down here, or a liquid pump down here, and we can pump all of this polluted water up to our storage tank over here. 
We just gotta do a little bit of thing me jiggery. Oh, first though, I'm thinking water weed seeds need to go in here. For that, we're going to need to put in a liquid just across here. Oh, and you can go. Also, they're gonna get their toesies wet every time they wander through here, so... Uh, we could put ladders across the top, that might be a smarter plan. Something along those lines, but uh, I, you know what, I'm just kind of willing for them to get their feet wet. 200 kilos of brine should at least get us started, then we could chuck down some of these water weed seeds wherever they... Ah, yes, water weed seeds, perfect. Plant, coffee, do the lot all along here. Uh, 4, 8, 12, I think 12 is all we need, but... Well, why not stockpile that food for later? I mean, it'd be a shame not to. Uh, you can go up there, across there. Yes, I know the electricity grid needs to be redone at some point, but for now, this shall suffice. Uh, in the middle here, we're going to put in bleachstone. Uh, consumable ore, give us the bleachstone, and for the bleachstone, we're going to probably put this on priority six. We want people... See, maybe even seven, this stuff. Actually, no, six is fine for bleachstone. A little bit of... Chlorine gets around the place, that's not the end of the world. Slime lung germs are slightly more of an annoyance. What are they set to? Is it to five? Ooh. What? Let's set those to seven. Yeah, there we go. Much more stable. Uh, that'll go to seven. We'll have these set at six. Or, yeah, these set at six. And then we'll fill these up and we should be able to get these to grow. Farm plot is inoperable. Irrigation. Oh, God. Yeah, I didn't put a plumbing pipe in here, did I? Fine. We will give you a pipe. Even though it is completely unnecessary. And these plants require no water. All they require... Wait, they do? Hmm. I was under the impression these things only required bleachstone. Well, that's a problem. I am... I am not willing to cool down a bunch of salt water right now. I mean, don't get me wrong. We have oodles of salt water, but it's either 90 degrees or 76 degrees. Um... Yes, that's a problem. Now, we could cool it down using an aqua tuner and a bunch of power and effort, but we don't want to use a bunch of power right now. Our coal's at 47 tons, but I'd prefer to get a, a few other things sorted before we worry about that. Uh, first, we're going to pump this water out of here and go a little bit deeper into the slime biome. I'm just going to pop down, throw down a quick pump, pump out the water, and all of that polluted water is going to go up into our storage tank here. That was running rather low, so I think a little bit of polluted water for later couldn't hurt, plus we can drain this entire sector. All of this working in the west, the cold, and the nasty polluted auction is driving everyone's stress levels a little high. Uh, I can understand why that would be happening. Also, give me that fry egg. We need to sweep that up. And I'm trying to get all the fry eggs in here. Hopefully no one has a narcoleptic nap and drops that along the way. Uh, anyone? Oh, God. Yep, they dropped one the first one. Well, it's kind of to be expected. We do have nothing but narcoleptics on the team. Hey, over here we're going to put ourselves in our massage tables again. Uh, we removed them because, well, we converted that entire area into a dining hall. So, three massage tables we're going to put into aeropots, and as well as that, we're going to stick in some carpet tiles. Carpet tiles give a... oh, was it? They reduce your run speed, but they make everyone happier. So, I believe if we place them right here, uh, let's go with sandstone. One there, one there, and one there. As far as I'm aware, the bottom left tile is where they're actually considered to be on when they're on the massage table. And it actually reduces their stress when they're on carpet tiles. So we're combining a massage table with carpet and the actual massage room. So this should hopefully drive everyone's uh, stress down. Ooh, unlock new blueprints. Basic orange pants. Thank you. Basic yellow shirt. Oh my god, this is... Hey, volley... Vo volley volleyballs? A little happy trio of inflatable critters. Overjoyed response from the balloon artist. Okay then. Perfect. Well, that last one I really appreciate. Okay. Uh, in here we can stick in a buddy bud, just to make sure everyone gets that extra bonus. In fact, I don't think it really matters. We've got... Yeah, this whole place is flooded with buddy buddy germs everywhere. And then we shall set this to... Break starts at... If you go to 25%, 30. Okay. Break ends at zero. And if we check on them now, we can see stress. Smell flowers, minus five. Pleasant chit chat, minus five. Appreciated, minus five. Tickled toesies, minus 15. And receiving clinic massage, minus 60. So the tickled toesies is from the carpet. So that's an extra minus 15 we get. Removing, uh, receiving clinic massage is minus 60. So that's a minus 75 because of just uh, between the bed and the carpet tile. That's, um, that's a good way to get people stressed down. Now we just got to make sure everyone goes to 25. Yeah, 25 is fine. Might take a little bit of power, but uh, I think we can live with that for now. Eh, hey, done. Who's on there? Uzo? 
Yeah, perfect. They definitely needed. They were the highest stressed out one. Okay then. Now, where were we? Oh yes. Uh, I just want. Damn it! It's definitely not in here. But I'm still extracting all the slime. While we're in here, we might as well rip out the slime. It should only take a few minutes. Uh, we've also got this in here. This should have been. I want to say the teleporter room or one of those. But we've turned off the teleporter on this to start. We're trapped on this planet until we build rockets. Uh, let's quickly rip this out and move on. I'm not sure that was a good use of our time, but it needed to be done at some point, I suppose, and it definitely has increased the amount of slime we've got available for our crop. So, you know, food's still going to be stable for, well, a, the foreseeable future. And in that case, let's have a quick gander over down here. Okay, so this is the other place. Ah, it's got to be in here somewhere? Maybe it's further back, or maybe I'm missing an entire slime biome altogether. Let me figure out how we're going to go in here and grab this. Ooh, actually, we well, might want to go in and get these fossils while we're at it, though. There is an enormous amount of zombie germs in there. I think I'd like to crush all of those, if at all possible. Yeah, let's go in there, through the ice biome, if at all possible. So, to break in here, what I wanted to do is try and suck all the gas out of this section and just dump it into a tank. We could crush up the gas, but it's going to be kind of hard with that amber fossil there. Instead, we've made ourselves just a little liquid lock here. Two blobs of napta right there and there. Now, there's a little bit of gas in the middle, but that doesn't matter. Nothing should be able to get from this side to the other side, which means we just got to put a gas pump in here. Uh, yeah, do that there. And we can build that out diagonally, and then we should be able to put in a gas pump right here and then just scrape out the rest of the gases. That allows us to get rid of this uh, spore kid without causing any major germ spreadage. I mean, that is a lot of germs. That's literally millions of the damn things. Uh, anyone want to... Oh, come on. Now you're just letting slime lung emit in there as well. I mean, we could let the two of them fight it out, but I, I think the uh, the sport kids would win. Hey, we stick in a quick gas pump then. Done. Once that's finished, it can take all of that out of there. There's like half a kilo of gas pressure, but once that's all removed, that should be all the germs gone, and then we can add in in here. And that should all get vacuumed out pretty quick as well. Now, all of that gas... Actually, I'll show you where that gas goes in a second. Well, that should be a vacuum in... Well, pretty much now. Uh, seriously? 18 grams? Ow. Where's it coming from? Never mind. That gas is going to go along here, go up, and go into this gas tank. Now, the reason I put this gas reservoir up here... It seems to be surrounded by some polluted oxygen, which is bad, but there was... Damn it, there isn't any more. There was chlorine around here. But that's okay. We're going to dump all of the germs in here. At some point, we'll chlorinate these. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of germs. Huh, how are the germs dying? Never mind, they're dying. I'm just going to be happy with that. All right, we finished. Excellent. In that case, we can core at this area, and then we can immediately dig up that spore kit. Now, we will have to get rid of all the carbon dioxide in here, and there is a few kilos of it, but that shouldn't take more than a moment or two. Now, while that's going on, and we're prepping this place for further expansion and exploitation, uh, this down here is broken. I had no idea when it broke, but uh, basically the temperatures in here went above 100 degrees. So, we are going to inject a little bit of uh, not heat in there by basically chucking in a temperature shift plate here. That'll draw temperature out of this section. We just want to get these running even a little bit, and it should hopefully start bringing the start them running. The moment one of them starts running, it should start dragging down the temperature. It might just be this volcano is too hot, or it might just be I shouldn't have put in that layer of oil. Or maybe I should have used aluminum piping. Well, we didn't have aluminum at the time, but maybe aluminum piping would have been a better choice for uh, a gas medium in here. Maybe I shouldn't have used... Well, no, I used gold steam turbines. Hmm. You know what? We'll worry about it later. How's that looking? Okay, all the... Yep, most of the germs are gone out there. And there we go. It's actually producing. Right, it's dragging down the temperature. Not by nearly enough. There's like, what, it's 190 degrees down here? That's not good. Ooh, and that's definitely going to inject a whole bunch of heat into the outside area. Let me play around with this for a little bit. Oh, the fossil got excavated. Success, my duplicates have safely e excavated a set of strange fossilized remains. It appears that there are more of this giant critter's bones strewn about the asteroid. It is vital that we reassemble the skeleton for deeper analysis. Right, uh, so... Demolish? Can we? Or do we just leave it there? Well, never mind. We've vacuumed out the area. We've gotten rid of that uh, annoying gases. The gases went up here, but the germs seem to have vanished. I think there's just a maybe a scooch of chlorine around here somewhere. Yeah, there's a little bit of chlorine around here. I think the chlorine's getting in occasionally and uh, causing that to die off. Or maybe it's just they're in a gas tank. I'm not sure. 
I suppose we'll find out later. Let's keep digging across here, though, and see what else we can find in this biome. This is actually a little bit bigger than I thought it was. Oh, before we dig in here too much deeper, uh, just coming down here. Yeah, this is slowly sort of processing. You can see, like, it's spluttering. And that's because the temperature is about 144. I think it's about 135, 140 is as high as it can go before it starts stifling itself. So I think this uh, aluminum volcano might be just a little bit too powerful for these steam turbines. Now, I'm injecting chill in right now, but that's... We can't do that long term. We might have to come back in here and install an aqua tuner. Looks like... So it used to be you had to put in a layer of oil along the bottom here to stop the water losing some heat. And the water would have to come down and land in the liquid instead of on tiles, and there was some weird heat deletion bug going on. But they've patched that out, so maybe that has made this design less effective. It could also be that this is just an incredibly powerful volcano. Uh, it could be that is murdering it, or I just didn't put in enough steam. I'm not sure exactly which, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. What are we down to? 136, 139. Yep, yeah, okay, that's enough. That temp shift plate can go. Uh, and they can go back to doing their thing. Once that temp shift plate is out, it should still keep functioning. And I guess now is the moment of truth. Okay, so it can delete heat up to a certain amount. It's just this volcano might be a little bit too good for it. I've added in 800 kilos of water. I might have to add more. We'll see. Well, we're not going to open that volcano until it's tamed all the steam in there. All right, uh, you're done over there, and somehow we've managed to eat through a whole bunch of coal again. I... yeah, we really need to get around to this stuff at the bottom. I think... I think the hunt for the steam vent's gonna have to wait. I think we just have to start this. We're, we're just eating through our coal too fast, and it's making me too nervous. Yeah, let's get started on this. To make this just a little bit neater, we're going to put in a liquid lock here, same as before. This is going to be a couple of blobs in naphtha. It's pretty solid, and because we've got it up a step, it shouldn't cause any breakages. And, well, having it double down should make it much harder for it to break open. I mean, I mean it won't, it just means it's less likely. And everyone can get up and in and around up here. Oh, damn it. And, actually, let's deconstruct. Hmm. Actually, you know what? We move that back one more step. We can maybe cause all of that oil to automatically flow down here. It's just uh, we've got a bunch of slicksters we stuck up there ages ago before we decided to make this, and uh, yeah, they're kind of messing things up here for us. All right, let's uh, dig this out, and we got to vacuum it out as well before we can start even touching this magma. Before we start going too nuts in here, we want to start sweeping this place up. We're going to have to take all of the gunk out of here and sweep it up. Well, we don't have to, but we want to make it at least a mildly neat and tidy. Coal's at 18.6 tons. Oh, that's... That ticking clock over there is really annoying me. I should really figure out ways to cut back on our power supply. We could also hook these into the grid and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure how much power that's going to help us with, though. I'm trying to figure out where we should be cutting things off. Uh, have we shut off the petroleum? Yeah, well, we've shut off the plastic presses. The only things running right now are the rock crushers with fossil to lime. How much fossil to lime is left? Seriously? 6.3 tons. You know what? Turn it off. No more fossil to lime. Uh, steel is pretty much done. We'll leave that for now. Hmm. That just leaves the food cooling and whatever's going on inside the base. Yeah, that should be fine. Oh, and the polluted water we're pumping out of here. Guys, does anyone want to move those fish over there? Uh, make those a high priority. Make those a priority seven, if you wouldn't mind. We want to move these fish over here because it's just a waste of free food. So long as they're somewhere where they can keep reproducing, which is, they can over there, and... Oh! There was a few blobs of clean water in there. I kind of was mildly worried about that, but I figure it sort of worked out. It's not the worst. We can clean that mess up later if needs be. Guys, anyone want to move those fish? Turns out, uh, the reason they can't drop that off here is there's more than 26 critters in this area slash room, so we're going to have to make a separate room for them. Um, I tried doing it by sealing in the top of the fish thingies, but no. So let's try sealing in the bottom. How about now? There we go. So now they should go down and grab the fish. Come on, I don't want to waste those 400 kilos of plastic. Anyone? Hey, there we go. Now whatever you do, don't take a nap along the way. You got this, you got this. Come on. You can nap, okay, it doesn't matter if you nap now, it's fine. Perfect, and they drop out. Well, that's just... An added layer of fun. Okay, grand. So we need to keep these in that sort of scenario. You can go. We'll replace that over there. Okay, now where were we? Ah, yes. Oh, wow. We have actually swept up this entire area. 
All right, once this area is swept up, time to core it out some more. We'll move into smaller gas gas pumps in a minute. It's just the best thing to do is use a big gas pump to start. We don't want to waste too much power. We're trying to conserve coal and we'll switch to smaller gas pumps the moment we get it down to uh, almost no gas. Uh, let's see. Mm. So this here is going to be the bottom. And then what you're going to have is a very traditional thing, which is where you put in a power plant, say two steam turbines side by side. Then what you do is you have insulated tiles going all around it to stop, you know, the heat getting in on the steam turbine. So there'll be steam here, steam turbines here. Then it comes up, you get two tiles of a gap because you need at least two tiles for the steam to flow in and leak. Some people like three, depends on what way you've uh, you've engineered your thing. Then another three tiles here where we put in two more steam turbines right there. And then two more tiles up again. Then three more tiles for the steam turbines. Then two more tiles for gas, then three more tiles for steam turbines. So it'll be six steam turbines there, eight steam turbines in total. Uh, we'll have sort of cut a gas channel down here, but this is roughly what it's going to look like. For now, what we'll do is we'll cut out some of the bits that we don't need just to free up transport distance. And then we just got to make sure that we don't dig too far into areas. You see, oh. We should probably core out to get rid of the gas first. It just makes things easier in the long run. And you, you know what, we can, hmm, yeah, we can wall in that section in the corner as well. Plan here is pretty straightforward. Once you, once the big gas pump has removed most of the gas or the majority and you get down to the low amounts, you're better off just chucking in a whole bunch of small ones. See, early on, that big gas pump is going to be consuming about 500 grams a second of whatever's around it. But once you've gone below 500 grams a second, well, maybe not 500, but once you've gone below about 100 grams a second, you're usually better off switching to mini gas pumps. Normally, I don't really bother too much. It's just uh, time constraints mean we were sort of rushing this a little bit faster, so I'm willing to spend a little bit of extra effort putting in all those extra gas pumps. And as you can see, it's stripping out the area, and I totally forgot to do this section. You know what? We will deconstruct that, and we will stick another one in right there. The great thing is, since it's all one uniform gas down here, we don't have to worry about running multiple gas pipes because they're not going to con confuse each other. They're just going to click in and done. All right, that should be done in about another cycle. Now that was pretty quick, and that's exactly what you want, especially when you're down to 17 tons of coal. All right, let's rip out the gas pumps, rip out all of this infrastructure, and immediately put in all of the insulated tiles we're going to need. We definitely are a little bit shy on space down here, so we're going to try and squeeze in an extra few tiles diagonally. Uh, these things are set to priority six. Yeah, so they should build out. I'm not sure exactly. We're probably going to have to go at a fair chunk. So I'm thinking to about here, maybe. Now we just have to figure out a way to dig out here without causing any problems and hopefully not getting any pressure damage. This is going to compress up the magma when we do this. Uh... Ah, oh, there's a pretty big area. It'll probably be fine. If we start getting pressure damage, we'll have to adapt the plan. I think there's sort of a weird knack to building diagonally. Uh, it's like, I remember when I originally started building diagonally, it used to mess with my brain, but now it's like, no, no, I get it. You just kind of come in into the angle, you get it done. Like, we can't do that one until we do this one, and then we chop out this block, and then we just hope we don't overpressurize anything, which there's two and a half tons of pressure on the other side of that. It's okay, it's steel tiles, insulated igneous rock, and then we chop out that chunk there, and we should be able to build that tile diagonally. Assuming they can reach, they might not be able to. And I think... I think we stick in a temperature shift plate tile right here. And that was sort of the plan. If we can stick in a diamond temperature shift plate tile right there, that can suck heat right out of this magma and dump it into the door we're going to put on the other side. And we might also want to sweep up that stuff here. And hopefully nothing gets damaged. Ooh. Oh, this broke. Actually, that's good for us. That's good. That means the pressure should have gotten released a bit. Yeah, exit, exit. That worked out. Otherwise, we would have had to rip out this block and probably replace it with more steel. But assuming that obsidian chunk there is going to hold, we should be fine. All right, we'll put in a door next. Uh, we're going to want a mechanical airlock made of steel right about here, I'm thinking. Uh, maybe up a tile. You know, down here seems perfect. Yeah, stick another insulated tile there. We're going to have to put in some automation as well. Aqua Tuner is going to go here. This is not going to be enough, though, to cool eight steam turbines. It could probably cool about six and a half steam turbines. Well, running polluted water. So we'll have to upgrade this to a better coolant later on. But for now, we'll put in the eight tur steam turbines. We just won't run everything at 200 degrees. We'll drop it to, like, say, 170, maybe 160. And that should be plenty. Plus, this is going to be an on-demand one. Now, for the power... 
What we're going to do here is we're going to keep these steam turbines in vacuum and keep a thin layer of oil down the bottom here. And of course, I... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to figure out some way of getting in. Mm. I didn't leave any space to put in the, the little oil things to drop down the oil, did I? It's fine. It's fine. We'll figure it out. Okay, then after that goes in, this is where all the water is. Basically, water comes down here. It gets heated up by this plate. This plate turns it into steam. It'll also mix with the aqua tuner. Then all of that steam, all of that heat, all that stuff will get fed into the steam turbines to generate power. And that power is going to go down this spine. We're also probably going to have it come out this way as well as in through this section and into our base. I'm just trying to figure out a nice way of doing that that isn't horrifyingly bad. Oh, and we're going to put batteries in here. We can put in the, the batteries down here and they can act as battery storage for our network while also being capable, all their heat will get eaten by the steam turbines. It'll cost a bit of steel, but we got some floating around. Let me figure out, oh, and we can put in a few uh, transformers as well to have power down here. When it comes to doing the output pipes of the steam turbine, uh, my preferred method is, let's see, We'll grab an insulated tile over from over here, or sorry, insulated pipe. Then what we do is we bring it out all the way to this section and we connect the two together. Then we do a liquid bridge. Done. Insulated liquid pipe all the way across. And, ooh, yeah, I have not done this correctly. These guys need to go that way, this guy needs to go that way, and those two need to be severed. And the insulated liquid pipe goes all the way out there. Now what happens is... These two output into this, and it's it sends them across. If you try to run that directly through the output of the other turbine, it's going to cause huge problems. And done. We now have all eight turbines set to dump all of their water down here. You know, this is the important bit. Uh, this is what probably gets people. If you took that aqua tuner and you say stuck it up here somewhere, you're going to have huge problems. Like just say you stick it up here on top of some mesh flow tiles. But well, what happens is all the water is just going to fall straight down here and land down this section. This is where all the cooling is going to happen. Every single piece of cooling that we have being generated by these steam turbines is going to land right there. In fact, let's put a temperature shift plate right there and there and there. So that means all of the cooling from... Oh, like this aqua tuner's heat should get absorbed by that. Uh, all of the... everything should go down here. If you had the aqua tuner up the top, what'll happen is the steam up the top is going to get extra heat injected into it. And you're, since you're doing all your temperature control down here, this will probably end up too hot, there'll be problems. You want to put all your heat sources usually in one spot, a few temperature shift plates to help even it out, and you should be done. Now, for extra bonus points, what we're doing is we're sticking in a few transformers here. It's a little bit complicated, but, uh... These things are hopping across here on conductive bridges. It took me a while to figure it out as well, but like they go up here and we have three two kilowatt wires we can feed into whatever power stuff we decide to make here later. Battery wise, actually, let's stick down some power batteries. Uh, Jumbo should be fine. Uh, actually, we'll put in one smart battery and then a whole bunch of Jumbos and we'll make them all out of steel, of course. Uh, jumbo, 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 Jumbo and a few more Jumbos. Why not? One thing we're not going to do, though, is we're not going to plug them in just yet. The problem is they're going to be in vacuum until we start getting the uh, the steam up and running. Uh, lead? You know what? I am willing to risk lead, except for the end one. Since the end one is going to be our control, I'm going to make sure that one goes on iron, just in case something goes horrifically wrong somewhere. Then, automation wire. We are going to want an automation wire from you to control everything. Mm. Thing is, if the uh, the power on the network goes below a certain amount, we're going to want this to tell the steam turbines to kick on or off. This is going to be an on-demand system, which is a little bit odd, I know, for one of these things. But oop. yeah, let me uh, just hook this up. We are just about ready to start ejecting the coolant. Okay, well, we are actually are ready to start ejecting the coolant. We have polluted water getting brought over here. It gets dumped onto this liquid pump. This liquid pump gets it and starts pumping it down here. And we're going to start filling our cooling loop that cools down the steam turbines. And the steam turbines, though, have a bit of a problem. Ooh, let's see. You know what? Let's do one more thing first. Let's brick these in here, 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 and... Ooh, actually, yeah, let's just brick in the last ones as well. That way people can still get across these sections. Yeah, they can get across the, the steam sections we're going to seal off later on. Okay, you, we want a... Once those are done, we can start putting in the coolant across the bottom here. See, it's going, it's going, it's going. Perfect. How much water we got in there? I would like this to be at least a ton. A ton would be preferable. Um, hmm. Did I set these two? Disable auto bottle, disable auto bottle. Seriously? You guys are on sweep only. There we go. That was the problem. I think I turned them off there. I got distracted. Okay, you. I want you to give us crude oil. Enable auto bottle. 
Uh, copy settings and every single layer. That should pour oil into all of those and we're going to let them dump in 200 kilos on each section. It's pretty straightforward. 200 kilos of oil should not flood it and at the same time it gives in plenty so that uh, the coolant can, can transfer to the steam turbines. You are done. You can be deconstructed. Anyone want to... Anyone? 200 kilos. Perfect. That'll be done in a second. And as you can see, the polluted water is going around here and cooling them and going through that thin layer of oil at the bottom. Uh, give me the liquids. Well, reasonably thin. This gives really good conductivity while also allowing us to keep these in a vacuum. We don't have to worry about temperature escape and all sorts of stuff. And finished. And there we go. Our cooling loop of polluted water is also full as well. That's 1.6 tons. That is more than enough. Oh, uh, what's this set to? High threshold will be... Mm, we'll make you 60 and the low threshold will be 10. We'll have to fiddle with this later, but for now we just want to get the setup. Next up, we want to put in the water. Here, we want to seal that in. And then this here... Yeah, it's definitely still good. I think, though... I think I want to seal this off. You see, the problem we face is, if I dump water in here and there's any mess up at all, steam will start going everywhere and it'll all become real messy real fast. So instead, we're going to start sealing this up, and then once it's sealed up, then we're going to dump in the water. Though I may want to put in some sort of input. There. That's much better. And you... Oh, we want to make sure that insulated pipe is right there. And then we'll get ourselves a bridge across the top. All right, we need to bring clean water down here and start filling up this whole system with clean water as well. The next step is not that difficult, actually. All we do is we just dump water down here. To do that, we've just rerouted this pipe. The one that was bringing down the polluted water inside it now skips that tank, it goes straight into this liquid vent. And then all the way back up here where we did a few snips, we're just dumping clean water in here now. So clean water gets pumped across here and goes down into the system. How much do we need? Hmm. Let's see, we have... We count how many tiles we've got. Rough count, we got about 180 tiles in here. If we want to have this about 40 kilos in pressure, which seems decent, I suppose, we're going to need about 7.2 tons. Which means the bottom tile here is 13 tiles into 7.2 tons. 553 kilos is what we wanted in there. We may have gone slightly over, but that's okay. Uh, oh. We may have went way over. Oh. Uh, oops. Uh, guys, stop, 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 stop. Yeah, while all that was going on, uh, me and the dupes were off, um, well, there was just, we were kind of running low on coal, so we dug coal and drank beer together, and yeah, th this is, this is sort of what got me distracted. I was off here just coring this area out. Anyway, it definitely has improved our coal supplies just a little bit. Hey, you, uh, we need to turn you off, um, hmm, I don't think we need any you know what, we'll do it from the other side. I don't think we need any more water in the system. I may have actually overfilled it slightly. Distractions, distractions, and more distractions. Yeah, this is just more mass we need to heat up, but it's fine. Uh, I think we're actually ready to fire this up. Oh, one last thing. We'll seal you up as well. What I've done here is I've sealed these areas off, as in the power in here comes out and goes into the center here. But at the top, the power goes right back in and then out the other side. So this way, there's sort of these vacuum rooms between everything, and there's no way the temperature from this side can get out, because, well, the only way it could get out is across the bottom layer. And the bottom layer is not touching any of these heavy watt joint plates. It makes things, makes things simpler. Now you, let's go. Uh, actually, make that 160. And if you are above that... Oof. And boom. Temperature... Temperature rapidly rises. Uh, let's put you below for a second. Let's just tease this a little bit. Don't want to go too nuts just yet. Ooh. Look at that. I should have maybe put temperature plates all the way on the bottom, but that's really only necessary at the start when firing this up. It should be that long term it won't make a difference because all the water is going to end up in this section. And let's close the doors again. We starting. Perfect. Eh, check that to below for a second. Ooh. Well, we're definitely eating some heat. Uh, I love the way this water is just like rapidly flowing down here and evaporating. How are we doing? Oh yeah, power starting to flow. None of it's got an escape route. Yep. 
me to above again. All right, I think that should be sufficient. Now that we've got enough steam in here, this shouldn't cause any more issues. Yeah, it's popping back and forth itself. Now we can start plugging in the batteries. Uh, give me some heavy wire. Now, it may look like there's no wire there, but there's actually a heavy watt conductive wire right there, made of iron. So we can plug that in, plug that in across, uh, cancel you, and then we can plug in this one down here. And also cancel oh, yeah, some lead. And that should start trying to fill the grid. Should? Wow, how little are we using? Very little. Oh, and down here, this. We want to set you to, if this is above, oh, say 20? Yeah, if it's above 20, I want you to turn on and cool down the coolant. Right now, I don't think we're getting too much power to this thing. Most of the power has been eaten by the aqua tuner. Come on, give me some juice. There we go. Finally starting to see some returns on that. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of time to warm up. In the meantime, i got to figure out how we plug this into our main grid. Um, hmm. You see, we have a few power grids going on. In fact, we have three power grids going on. We have this sort of one decentralized power grid. This provides water over here to our oxygen. Uh, this is pumping oil from up the bottom for when we need plastic, but that's more intermittent. Uh, this is another power grid that provides power to our industrial brick. And our final power grid is over here that provides power to our main base. So we actually have three separate ones spread out all across the map. Ooh, barbecue. Uh, one second. We shall print that. And that auto sweeper should immediately grab it, chuck it into the auto loader, and boom. <laughs> nice. Ah, I kind of like how that's turned out. This has just sort of worked so far. Oh, and I discovered why some of these things were not changing temperature. It turns out there is a bug. Uh, if you have stuff in a refrigerator, it reduces its temperature down to a one degree or two degree. I think it's one degree. And then if you take it out of a refrigerator and put it into a vacuum, it will never change temperature again until you reload the game. There's some bug where if it's in a fridge, its temperature becomes locked. And unless you and if you put it into a vacuum afterwards, it won't change temperature, even if it's on a freezing cold plate. That's the well, that's what I heard. So that was why when we moved the food down here, some of them didn't work until I reloaded the game. Just if you're trying to use one of these vacuum sealed setups. Oh, and one of the reasons we're going in vacuum, like some people like to say put in a little bit of chlorine in here. You can put in bleach stone, bleach stone off gases, and you end up with a gas in here. If it was in a gas, it would have made it no the gas would have helped out totally because surrounded by a gas it would change temperature. It's only when it's in a vacuum that bug. It's a very specific bug, it seems. But I don't like using chlorine here because well, I go really low temperature. Our temperatures that we're working at are minus 40, and chlorine has a tendency to turn into liquid at that sort of temperature, and foods in liquid chlorine tend to cause problems, uh, because liquid chlorine isn't actually safe for foods. It still causes them to go off. And if you put a gas in here, the temperature starts to leak out. This is a perfectly safe barrier. The food in here is icy cold, but it, the temperature can't pass through the naphtha because there's no gas to conduct it. So this stuff is just... Chilling the food, but nothing else. We don't have to worry about freezing the center of our base with minus 40 stuff. Well, minus 30 if you're using chlorine, I suppose. Okay, that's some of the reasons we do that. Uh, down here, though, I'm thinking we run... Oh, man, I really should have done a power spine right here. I might have to do that later, but I'm thinking we run a power spine up the center of the map. Uh, we might have to scooch some... Oh, man, we don't really have a lot of room, do we? I kind of scuppered myself with this stuff. If we could run a power spine right up here, we can feed power off to either side. Uh, right now, we got 25 coal. All that coal digging has helped us out. So let's maybe see how much power we get out of this for a second before we, we worry about getting the power spine installed. I think that's working pretty good. Oh, and I haven't plugged in these up here. Uh, you. We'll plug you in at the same time. And now we've got a few large power transformers here to run wires on. Ah, <sighs> okay. So this is... This is sort of a standardized design in a lot of ways. You, The tendency is to leave three tiles at the bottom. You can get away with two. I like to leave three. It just leaves a little bit more space for the gases to spread out. Two tiles for these, though you can also leave three, though that leaves a lot more space. But if you're going to go with a two-tile high design, never go more than three st steam turbines. If you go more than three steam turbines, they start to run out of steam by the gets to the end. The steam just has a hard time pushing all the way to the end, and you'll have to keep increasing your steam pressure in here. We're working at, what, 60 at the bottom to 20 at the top, and you notice over here... So you got about 16 kilos. You go multiple steam turbines long, the pressure gets lower and lower. So you've got to be careful about how you do these things. And you're going to have to keep putting in more and more steam pressure. And as you can see, the top stuff here is only 130. The reason for that is when we have first initially booted this up, well, the steam going up to the top was only about 130, 120, or 100, 100 degrees and a little bit up. 
So what'll happen is as this keeps going and as the steam keeps getting recycled, it's always ending up at about 170 down here, 160, 170, because, well, our temperature set to, is set down here and it's slowly creeping up. So it's only the early steam that's a problem, and now this later stuff is getting warmer and warmer and should be fine. Oh, and it's all controlled by the smart battery. 60 degrees low, 90 degrees high. I figure we're going to run our entire base off this. That'll completely obliviate the need for coal. And there is quite a lot of temperature there to work with. I think it'll last us at least a few hundred, if not a, a thousand cycles or so. And we'll be switching over to oil long before that. But this, this is a perfectly solid power brick for any base. As usual, save game file is attached. So if you want to take this apart, have a look at it, see what is made of what. Uh, just uh, steel down here, steel door in the middle, diamond temperature shift plates. There is a little bit of uh, over-engineering here. I've made, I've used iron power wire in here. It's probably not necessary. It shouldn't go above 200 degrees in here. You should be able to get away with even lead. Actually, what's the temperature of lead melts at? 327 degrees C. Ugh. I wouldn't really use lead down here, though. If you are if you wanted to be skimping, skimp, you can use lead up here at the top. But down here, I wouldn't really skimp just in case something goes wrong. You end up going above the 300 degrees and something happens. I haven't built in an access corridor in here. You can, though, what you can do is, um, well, what I normally do is I'll place a drop of liquid on, I'll de deconstruct this tile. Then what you can do is, after you've deconstructed that tile, you build another tile diagonally here. Then you deconstruct this tile and put a blob of liquid on it. Then you can deconstruct that tile and you can literally just sort of walk in. It allows you to walk in here and go service the thing. I usually don't leave it open because single blob liquid locks annoy me. I at least, uh, I prefer to at least have a double. Not that they annoy me. I find them risky. Oh. And over here, I have figured out what was causing the problems and was messing everything up. I think we can fix it, though. You see, this is erupting right here, and the center is ending up above 140 degrees. And because of that, this steam turbine has to eat 140 degree heat, and it's sort of stifling a bit, if you see it. It's stifling a bit, and the temperature is getting interrupted. Whereas this stuff over here is only about 137, 138, so this one's doing just fine. It's eating just enough heat. So all I need to do, put in a bunch of temperature shift plates. Yep. So if we were to, say, put a bunch of temperature shift plates like that, it should help even at the temperature a bit, and should hopefully cause that to be less of a problem. I'm thinking next up, food. I want to get food sorted and sorted hard. Uh, thing is, we've got the power now that we can start cooling down the water to run the water weed. As well as that, I would really like to get a few of the random foods going. Like, maybe get some mushroom wrap, surf and turf, pepper bread. Basically, anything that's over four quality uh, or higher, except for tofu. Because tofu is absolute garbage, and no one should ever make tofu ever for any reasons that's any way reasonable at all. Uh, so, ooh, mixed berry, frost burger, pepper bread, surf and turf, mushroom wrap. Oh, and stuffed berry. So it looks like we're making all of those. That's going to require an awful lot of water temperature cooling. We're going to need to run sleet wheat. We're going to need to run... Oh, God, that's going to be a nightmare. But it's fine, it's fine. Oh, and for the natural gas, we can totally get our hands on that. Remember, it's just, it's a, it's a casual playthrough, so we're not doing anything too super specialized. Otherwise, we just make all of one food type and call it a day. Instead, we're trying to like, we're, we're trying to spread out, do a little bit of diversification. When I really have to do, I do have to get into this. So I think, uh, I think I'd prefer about another 15 dupes before we start chewing into that. I think that takes about four or five dupes to run that. Four or five dupes sleeping all the time. Hey, I am going to cut this out here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Good luck.